والناس يعصونه جهرا فيسترهم والعبد ينسى وربي لا ينساه وأشهد أن سيدنا وإمامنا وقائدنا رسول الله محمد أغر عليه للنبوة خاتم من نور يلوح به ويشهد وضم الإله اسم النبي إلى اسمه إذ قال في الخمس المؤذن أشهد وشق له من اسمه ليجله فذو العرش محمود وهذا محمد اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليك سيدي يا رسول الله We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we thank him and we sending our blessings and our salutations to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and alhamdulillah we used to have every Jumu'ah at night we used to study and reflect upon the topic of the khutbah that we gave uh, earlier and alhamdulillah we gave the khutbah today about the ingredients of peace how to have peace in your life not only the inner peace not only the spiritual peace not only the social peace but it is peace in general how to have peace in your life and the word peace i as i mentioned today in the khutbah it's different than having the luxury stuff of the life sometimes we got confused we think that you know peace means to have a good car Peace means to, to have a nice house, which is, you know, which is not accurate. But the, the peace in the life, you can find a person, Allah, I saw this. I saw like families in a small tent and, and they were refugees in a small tent. And in that tent, you have a mother with three, four children. And you see, mashallah, the smile of the children and the harmony and the family together. You wish you are there. Wallahi. You have people, especially in this country, they are suffering from loneliness, being alone. And subhanallah, he might have a, a nice house, a good house, but subhanallah, he does not have that peace. He does not have happiness. He does not have that peace of mind, peace of heart. Always, you know, is, is panic, having anxiety, worry about something. But peace is something different. So don't think that you, you will get peace by having money. No, you have a, other ingredients to get peace. And we give in the khutbah four steps for things for elements for the ingredients of peace number one Allahu Akbar. shahada alhamdulillah is to achieve the meaning of shahada and what is number two to build a connection with allah in salah and what is number three remembering allah having dhikr with allah allah said alladhina amanu those who are seeking comfort and peace in their hearts, they have to get it by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is number four? Sadaqah, zakah, giving others, you know. It's not only money, but sharing something with others. You know, giving plate, you know. So giving like, brother, give the plate to the imam before. Okay, brother, give the plate. That is something good. Okay, <laughs> sharing in a uh? yeah, sharing yeah, like having a conversation with somebody. Someone is in, in, in your neighborhood is lonely, and you know he does not have anyone going with going to him to spend time to let him feel comfort. If he is worried about something, he will share it with you. Give him certain Even advice. On that uh? Even on social media. yeah, and and sharing ad sharing advices on social media to certain talks, uh, sharing the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, sharing verses of the Quran. That is that is something you know, giving people something that makes you happy. You know, who who had the experience of giving, he will realize that the giver always happier than the taker. 
You got it? But when you taste it, when you experience it, you will get that truth that you are causing happiness to yourself before you make others happy. And number two, I wish that you, you, you picked the message that I said today, drawing a smile to the face of somebody that will let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you smile, where? In your heart. You will feel like your heart is smiling. Your heart is cheerful. Having that peace of mind. You know, one of the things that you need to know, if you wanted to get peace, that's, you can consider it number five, that do not oppress anyone. Do not do injustice to somebody. Why is that? Because you do not know the consequences of the dua of the oppressor, of the one who had been oppressed. You do not know the, one, the dua and the consequences of the mazloom. The only dua, you remember when, I, when, when we were talking about al-Isra wa al-Mi'raj? Yes. Something past the Mi'raj. Sidrat? Yes, Allahu Akbar, mashallah. Allahu Akbar, you see that was in Rajab. You see, we are in Shawwal almost, you know? So Rajab, Sha'ban, Ramadan, Sha'an, Dr. Mashallah, still remember. Yes, the Hijjah, yeah. Another Hijjah. The Qadda, the Qadda, another Hijjah. The Qadda, another Hijjah. Otherwise, we are in Eid now. Okay. <laughs> so we said that we have Sidratul Muntaha. Sidratul Muntaha, what does it mean? It's a place over the seventh, above the seventh heaven. And it's, it's a place that no one can pass. No one can pass after this one. And we said, it is called Muntaha, means that's the very end. No one or nothing is allowed to pass Sidrat al-Muntaha. Even the prophets, yes. Even the angels, yes. Even Jibreel, yes. yes. Jibreel is not allowed to pass Sidrat al-Muntaha. And the only one was allowed to pass Sidrat al Munta, Rasulullah Muhammad. He is the only one. Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad. And I told you, we have in, in our Islam just two, three things that passes Sidrat al Munta or pass Sidrat al Munta. One of them, the dua of the one had, who was oppressed, Al Madhloom, because the narration of Rasulullah. The narration of the hadith of Rasulullah said that the da'wah, the supplication of the mazloom, the one who was oppressed, it will go up more, even above the seventh heaven, and it will pass Sidratul Muntaha till it goes directly to the throne of Allah. And it will start moving around the throne, moving around the throne, and it it, it will do that sound of like bees. You know, when you have bees and the bees are buzzing, zzz, zzz, that's the dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while the dua is moving around, Allah will say, Ihda'i, be calm. Fawa'izzati wa jalali, I swear by myself, by maj my majesty. I will give you victory even after, after time, after a while. That's the dua. So do not, do not. You know, I can understand, I can understand that you miss dhikr, that you delay some of the salah, which is not acceptable, but I can understand. But what I cannot understand that you oppress somebody. That is the worst thing that you can do in your life. I will tell you why. And we have a, a line of poem says, لا تظلمن إذا ما كنت مقتدرا فالظلم ترجع عقباه إلى الندم تنام عينك والمظلوم منتبه يدعو عليك وعين الله لم تنم. 
Do not oppress anyone, even if you were able to. Because you might sleep and you think that nothing happened. And you have the one who had been oppressed is awake and he is making dua against you. And Allah will, not, will never sleep. So that means one time, one day, you are going to get hit because of his dua. And I remember one of the, during the time of the Abbasi, the Abbasi, the Abbasi time, one of the rulers at that time, he was taken to the jail with his son. And while they are in the jail, he looked at himself and to his son, he said, the, the son talked to his dad, he said, what happened, my dad? After the palaces and the, the, the soft mattresses and all this, we are here inside the prison. He said, Ya Bunay, la'allaha da'watu mazlumin sarat ila Allahi bilaylin ghafalna anha wa lam yaghfal anha Allah. Maybe it's a du'a. It's one du'a for somebody that we oppressed. We forgot it, but Allah did not forget. So that's the case. If you wanted to get real peace in your life, at least put your head on the pillow and you are not oppressing anyone. You remember the person? The person, the Rasulullah assigned him that he is one of the people of Jannah. What's the reason? He said, when I, when I put my head on the pillow, I have no grudge, no, nothing towards anybody. That's one of the secrets to get peace in your life. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us get this meaning. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alameen. And do you want to hear the sixth element or you want to hear more about how to get peace in your life? I, I can add one just because of the time. I had one, of, I have the brother who brought coffee and, and what else, samosa? <laughs> huh? Allahu Akbar, you see? So oh, everyone now will leave the lecture and start thinking about the samosa and so delicious, inshallah. So <laughs> if you wanted to get peace, and that is something we, we forget mostly when you make salah wa salam for the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa Wallahi, I, I, I'm just telling you a story. I was, I had one of the relatives and she was a old lady. And whenever, whenever I visit this lady, she passed away, may Allah shower her with his mercy. Whenever, when I was young, when, whenever I, I visit her, she's always making salah wa salam for the Prophet. Then I talked with her son, I said, let her change. Let her do something else. Like saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. You know, let her change. He said, no, no, no. She likes Salah wa salam for the Prophet Muhammad. And she was almost like 80. And Subhanallah, when she passed away, the day that she passed away, and Wallahi, I was outside the house, and uh, I had the the, I was thinking to pass by her to check on her. But I got busy with something. I didn't have time. Then I didn't go. And I got the call that she was praying and she died while she is making sujood. And the sisters who went for her ghusl, they can tell you about it. You know, how it was her face. They said, it seems like we saw the moon in her face. And her body was smelling misk. Subhanallah. That is one of the fruits of saying salah wa salam for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you are, if you are worried or overwhelming, overthinking about something, I recommend you. Say, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. 
وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Say salaam wa salam to the Prophet Muhammad by any form that you want. And I promise you, just 10 times out of sincerity, and look at what, what will happen to your heart. You will get comfort and peace and tranquility. And you know why is that? There is something, wallahi, we don't pay attention for. Because it is the dhikr that Allah himself likes to say. Again, it may shock you. That is the dhikr that Allah himself likes to say. Allah likes to say salaam wa salam for the Prophet Muhammad. What is my evidence? Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Allahu Akbar. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allah and his angels are sending salaam wa salam for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So don't think that you are the first one. Don't think that you are the only one. And listen, 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 listen about the beauty of the Arabic language. Allah did not say, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu sallu ala nabi. No. He did not say, they prayed, they made salah. He did not say that in the past simple tense. But he said it in the present simple tense. That means it did not happen once, it did not happen tw twice, but it happens always. Yusalluna. It is mudara. It is present simple tense. They are in a continuous and they are in a constant state of making salah wa salam for the Prophet. Who is doing that? Allah and his angels. Sallallahu ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullahu khayran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Fi Quran Azim, inshallah. We have, uh, we, are, we need to make dua for Auntie Maryam and Brother Wajdi. And uh, we have also uh, the uncle of uh, Sister Bibi Jameer. Uh, her uncle, Muhammad Nasser from Canada. He was in the hospital and he was sick. Then the doctors sent him sent him home and they said like, you know, he's in a critical condition. That's her uncle in Canada. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him shifa, ya rabbal alameen. We are going to make dua to brother Muhammad Nasser, inshallah, and uh, to the brothers and sisters here, that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them shifa, ya rabbal alameen. And we are talking about the uncle of Bibi Jamir, brother Muhammad, Nasser in Canada, not brother Muhammad Nasruddin. Okay, I don't get confused. He is here, mashallah, watching our Zoom, Sister Azima. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all the brothers and sisters. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Let's make dua, let's send dua, inshallah, to our brother in Canada. Yes, we didn't see him. Yes, we didn't meet him before, but we have a relationship with him, which is our Islam, our religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him shifa ya rabbal alameen. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ya rabbana laka alhamdu kullu wa laka al-shukru kullu wa ilayka yurja al-amru kullu. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa zid wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma ya rabbana nas'aluka fi hadhi al-sa'at al-mubaraka anta munna ala akhana bil-shifa اللهم أمن عليه بالشفاء العاجل يا رب العالمين اللهم أشفيه شفاء لا يغادر سقما اللهم يا ربنا نسألك في هذه الساعة أن تشمله بعفوك وكرمك أمن عليه بالشفاء يا أكرم الأكرمين نسأل الله العظيم رب العرش العظيم أن يشفيه نسأل الله العظيم رب العرش العظيم أن يشفيه من كل داء يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم لا تدع لنا في هذا اليوم ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا وقضيتها ويسرتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أقول قولي هذا 
وأستغفر الله لي ولكم جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته